Welcome back to Economics 101. Today we are going to be discussing the concept of value. And the question we want to ask and answer is what is value and how can we measure it if at all possible? The essence of value has been fundamental to the study of economics, which is why it has been so contested and debated throughout the history of economic thought. With the classical school of economics and the British economists of uh, Adam Smith and David Ricardo, etc. They had the objective theory of value, which essentially said that the value of a good is innate in the object. And then continuously developed upon by David Ricardo and Karl Marx, they developed the labor theory of value, which essentially meant that the labor someone puts into producing a good is what gives that good its value. But it wasn't until 1870 with the marginalist revolution where Karl Menger, Leon Walras, and Stanley Jevons derived the idea of the subjective theory of value. And what they said was that it is consumer preferences and prices that determine the costs of production. Or in other words, all value is derived from our minds. And what we assign value to gives that thing its value it's it's its essence or what we give value to is from our own subjective thoughts of that good or a thing this can be a piece of plastic but when utilized to my benefit it becomes more valuable to me furthermore they also in the marginalist revolution derived the concept of marginal utility or more specifically diminishing marginal utility the concept of diminishing marginal utility follows from the praxeological principle that people satisfy their most highly desired ends first. So we can understand the essence of subjective value by the diamond water paradox, which is essentially that water is more valuable to us, but yet we pay more money for things like diamonds than we do water until we get into the desert when we're dehydrated and dying of thirst in which case we would pay a lot more, including diamonds, for some water. And more specifically, is there something innate in gold or diamonds that makes it so supremely valuable to us? Well, not exactly. And when we get into mediums of exchange and money and the uses of these certain goods, we essentially can assign more value to certain commodities and due to the potential values that they can offer us. And so when we apply the concept of diminishing marginal utility to a real life example, we can take units of water measured by buckets. The first bucket my end would be probably to quench my thirst to use for drinking. If I had a second additional bucket, maybe I would use that for bathing. If I had a third bucket, perhaps I use that to wash uh, my fruits and vegetables to clean them off. My fourth bucket, let's say I wash my car with, and my fifth bucket I use to create water balloons to throw at my foes. Now, if one of my buckets is removed from me and I'm left with only four buckets of water, I'm going to forego my least desired end, which is creating the weapons of water balloons to throw at my foes. And then if I have another bucket of water spilt or it's removed from me, I'm going to forego my least desired end, which would be to wash my car. And then I'm still left with my three buckets, right? What this implies is we use ordinal ranking rather than cardinal ranking. Cardinal ranking being a numerical rank and ordinal ranking being a, an ordering more of a qualitative nature rather than a quantitative nature, right? So if I have three best friends, I can't quantitatively order them a, using numbers. Say I have two best friends, I order them in my preference of what makes them a better friend to me rather than quantitatively deciphering what their friendship is measured to me by, right? So I can't say that uh, I prefer John's friendship 0.67% more than Brandon's friendship. I have to say that uh, I prefer X's friendship 
more than why is friendship, right? That may not be a good example. But yet this is the essence of diminishing marginal utility. And what this helps us derive is our law of demand, which is why it's sloping downward into the right. Because the more quantity units of a homogeneous good that we have, the least we value the last units of that good. So it's sloping down into the right because our first initial units of a good are more valuable to us. We'll pay more for the water we're able to drink and bathe rather than our later desired ends of creating water balloons and things of uh, our later desired ends. Now, another component to subjective value and, and this diminishing marginal utility is the idea that um, interpersonal value comparisons are not possible. What this means is that if I require an X amount, let's say of units of money to create and invest and create a new product, then that's very valuable to me to say it's a thousand units of a medium of exchange. That thousandth unit is very valuable to me because this is the point at which I can begin and create a new product. But yet for someone else, that 1000th unit may not be going towards the same ends, right? So we cannot make this comparison that uh, the 1000th unit of a medium of exchange is more or less valuable to another person's 1000th unit of a medium of exchange, because we cannot compare in a quantitative sense what value is and what it's used for and what it means to people. Even the same person may change his values. So this 1000th unit can be more or less valuable to me at a given time. I may think that just because I have to use more units of a certain thing to create a certain product, that that makes it more valuable rather than less valuable. Whereas maybe I could use less units of a product and create the same final product in which case it still remains in a subjective nature of what value this final product is to me and to other people. So as we begin to inquire into what is money and the medium of exchange, we have to remember that the value we put towards money is also dynamic. It's based on the value we assigned it the day prior and more or less. So this is the debate of economics of what is value and where do we derive our value from? Was it really objective this whole time or is it more of this subjective nature where our minds can assign value to certain things, certain ends, certain goods, certain services? Because an element that we don't even know how to utilize today is definitively less valuable for the fact that we're not utilizing it until we do, in which case it becomes more valuable. So the value, the product, the good, the element has remained the same, but our use for it has changed. Therefore, we gave it value by what we can create with it. And that's the essence of subjective value is that it comes from our mind and what we can use things for, but what we believe we can use things for. Because if we don't know what we can use certain things for, then how do we know its value? And this is the essential point that is fundamental to understanding economics of where does value come from? And as we go into study prices and medium of exchange and catalactics, this is very beneficial to our understanding of what these things are in economics.